Hi guys, this is Andy. Um, uh, this is first in a series of videos I'm going to make about Freemasonry, um, which I hope you find interesting and useful, whether you're a Freemason or not. Uh, so, uh, two things to say straight off. First thing is, I have been a Freemasonry, a Freemason, sorry, uh, since 2010. Uh, I'm a master mason, so it means I've been through the three uh, ceremonies, the first three ceremonies of masonry. So sometimes it's said that there are only three degrees of masonry. Uh, so if that's true, I've been through through all three. I'm also what they call um, a, a companion of the Holy Royal Arch. So I've gone through what's called an exaltation ceremony. Uh, which is seen in English Freemasonry at least to be the completion of the Master Mason degree. Um, so I'm speaking from some uh, knowledge, um, though this particular video is about why I resigned my uh, membership of my lodge. Uh, so we can get some things straight just to set the scene for the series of videos I'm, I'm going to make. Um, I don't speak for Freemasonry. I don't speak for any Freemasonic organisation. I speak for me alone as a sovereign individual, giving you my opinions, the benefit of my experience, if you like, uh, which I hope you find useful. But this is not the official view of Freemasonry. Um, so, yeah, from the start, the first video, I want to fess up, if you like, even though... I'm a Freemason. I'm not now a member of a lodge. Now, do you have to be a member of a lodge to be a Freemason? Uh, well, no, you don't. Once you have been made a Mason, so you've been initiated, you're always a Mason. You have the right to apply for membership of uh, any lodge. Uh, and presuming they so you don't have to go through that initiation ceremony again. So as a master mason, I could apply to join any lodge, and if they accepted me, I would be um, accepted as a master mason with the three degrees. I've got the certificate. Same with the Holy Royal Arch. If I wanted to join a, a, another chapter, I could. Except to me, I'd be uh, accepted as a um, as a companion. Again, I have a certificate. To prove I've gone through that ceremony. Um, but I was interested in Freemasonry long before I actually was invited to join a lodge um, because I've always been interested in philosophy and religion and truth. Um, in fact, um, and again, just to say before I say what I'm going to say next. Um, I'm, I have, in the ceremonies I have gone through, I have gone, taken oaths not to reveal what happens in the ceremonies. And I won't be telling you about the ceremonies because I think they're individual things. They are, um, there's value in going through them. Um, there's value in watching them. Um, but I will be quoting snippets from the ceremonies to illustrate my my points i don't think that's divulging any secrets um because you can find this information online anywhere though if you want to go through the ceremonies and see how they actually feel to go through and, and be a part of the ceremonies um which i suppose is the same as watching a film and actually being a part of a film or watching a play and being a part of a play uh, it's, a, it's a it's a different thing then you have to join a lodge um, but what I was going to say is one of the uh, in this what they call the ceremony of uh, passing, which is when you pass from the first degree to the second degree. So you go from an end to the apprentice to what they call a fellow craft, the first degree to the second degree. You uh, have an ex an exchange with the worshipful masters. It's like a question and answer session. You learn a short passage of, of words and answers 
Um, and the worship master asks you, where were you first made, made a mason? And the candidate for passing to the second degree says, well, the answer is in my heart. So in other words, um, you can be a mason without being a member of a lodge. And you can be a mason without uh, even having gone through the, the degrees as I have. What is a mason? Well, it's somebody that studies, sees value in and seeks to live by the teachings of Freemasonry. And this is why I originally was interested to become a Freemason. And I, I got the opportunity after being asked to join. I didn't seek a membership out. Um, but I was asked to join. But I was interested in joining many years before that because I was under the impression that Freemasonry had a body of knowledge uh, that had been passed down through the ages. Though Masonry um, traces its history back to the 1700s there is obviously a history before that and some Scottish lodges have got records going back to the 1600s because the Scottish lodges came before the English lodges and I think even the 1500s but you know it must it the the core philosophy behind masonry must go back even earlier um, and I was interested in that philosophy and I thought if I joined a lodge that I would go through the degrees and I would be able to learn that philosophy but I found uh, in my own experience and this is my own only my own experience it not to be the case um, and I'm not the first person or first researcher or first mason to say that the original philosophical religious uh, esoteric teachings of masonry though there are echoes of them in the ceremonies you you go through are not now to be found in freemasonry and in fact many many most probably 99 percent, well 100 percent of uh, freemasons that i've met haven't been interested in either actually the history of Freemasonry or the philosophical basis and history of Freemasonry as well, uh, which I think is sad um, because then Freemasonry just becomes a social club, <clears throat> albeit that, um, you know, that for some people can be a really useful thing. I'm not decrying the social side of masonry. Um, also, certainly not decrying the charitable aspects. But when you join Freemasonry, you are you are told that you are joining a, an organisation whose members are devoted to brotherly love, relief, and truth. Um, and you're also told. Um, that masonry is a peculiar system of morality um, which is taught and illustrated by allegory and symbols. Um, but whilst the concept of relief is certainly stressed, so charity, you're encouraged to give to charity, which all masons do anyway by virtue of the fees that they pay, because part of that goes to charity. Um, brotherly love, we seek to have harmony within the lodge. Hasn't, you know, as with any group of people, there are fallings out and things which happen. Um, but the truth aspect is certainly, in my experience, n n uh, never spoken about. Um, and we certainly don't get taught a peculiar system of morality, which is illustrated by allegory and symbols. Um, now, I thought perhaps, well, maybe you have to go on 
to study with other Masonic organizations. So if you if you research Freemasonry, you'll see there is a host of um, what they call side orders. The most interesting of which is known in the United Kingdom as as Rose Croix or Red Cross or Rosy Cross. Um, it's also known as the Ancient and Accepted Right. Um, in the United States, it's actually known as, as the Scottish Right. And it goes right up to a, a 33rd degree. The 33rd, though, is is conferred as an honorary degree. It's not a, it doesn't have a, a lecture, it doesn't have a ceremony, well, it has a ceremony, but it's a, it's an honorary degree. And I thought, well, perhaps within this um, body, here are here will be the philosophy of Freemasonry. Now, I was asked to join that organisation before I, sorry, that, um, that order. Now, you have to be a, you have to profess um, that you are a Trinitarian Christian to join that order in England that's not necessarily the case in other jurisdictions um, and that might have been difficult for me because I'm not a practicing Christian I certainly don't decry um, Christianity and I do aim to make a video of the differences between masonry and and religion because often masonry is accused of being a religion, which it's not. Um, but when I did some research on the ancient as accepted right as its practice in England, um, I started to realise that the it's not a place to study the philosophical background of masonry. Um, all I saw before me, and I could be wrong because I haven't gone through the, the ceremonies, is um, just another order similar to the other Freemasonic degrees i would taken. So the first, second and third degree and the exaltation to the Royal Arch, where there are hints of fascinating symbolism. But what the symbolism actually means, its origin, etc., uh, is never studied. And so that is the reason I decided to resign from my membership of my lodge, because, um, you know, I wasn't getting from Freemasonry what I wanted to get from it. You know, brotherly love I can practice in my daily life at home, at work, in my community. Relief I can practice if I want to give to charity. I can give to charity. Either my time or my money, I can do that. Um, and truth, well, when you are initiated into Freemasonry, you are promised uh, that the mysteries and privileges of Freemasonry will be revealed to you, which I took to men that the privileges of Freemasonry for me is that you become a member of a body of people who want to study this philosophy, want to study the symbols and the allegories that are contained in the ceremonies to enrich themselves and make themselves better people and make themselves better servants to their fellow human beings. Um, and the mysteries I took to mean what these symbols meant, how to study them, what the philosophy was behind the uh, the, the various ceremonies of masonry. Um, but I found that not to be the case. So I decided to continue my uh, Masonic studies individually, and I, that's what I'll be doing. And so I can then take, um, I can then embrace uh, books 
sources etc that are outside of english freemasonry um and uh yeah i'm looking forward to the journey and i have to just give them a name check which i'll which i'll mention in the subject matter of the video to jt astor who runs a podcast in the states called universal freemason uh, which i've been listening to for a week and helped me really to um crystallize in my mind just why i left my lodge and also crystallize the fact that i do want to uh continue to study uh what what i think is the core of freemasonry and my opinion is if if freemasonry in england wants to stay relevant and wants to continue to attract members i don't think you they can do it just on the basis of offering a you know a social club that gives to charity because there are lots of those uh, they need to get back to um what the core teachings of, of freemasonry were and i hope we're going to be able to explore those together um, it's going to be great for me to be able to do that uh, so thanks for listening as i say these are my opinions my opinions only you don't have to agree with them feel free to leave a comment please be respectful and i will be respectful of your opinion even if it differs wildly from mine um and i will see you next video ta-ta